Hi everybody, I'm Racine Pendarvis and I'm here with Cecily. <laughs> A, a, a beautiful songbird, a beautiful singer, songwriter, a poet, an activist, a, you know, a storyteller. You're all of those things. How did you find, how did you come to where you are today? Tell us about your journey. Oh, wow. So I guess, I mean, I always liked words and I always liked the way it felt when I was singing. So... I mean, I think it just came naturally, but when I was 12, I actually started taking voice lessons. So I took classical voice lessons all through high school, college, and um, yeah, I don't know. It's been such a journey. It's hard even to know where to start, but I originally wasn't going to go follow like music or singing as a career. It was just a hobby. And then... With such a beautiful voice like you. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I just... I don't know. I, I had always wanted to work as a diplomat. I always wanted to travel and, um, you know, really just get into, so or find some way to help people, you know. And I guess in college, I realized I didn't want to go into like development work. It just didn't, it didn't feel right for me. And so I realized I could to help people with music. How about that? How about that? Helping people with music, using your voice as a tool, you know. And when did you know? Because for such a, a small frame young woman, <laughs> out comes this this amazing powerhouse, this amazing voice. When did you know? When did you feel that? As a, as you know, how did that? When did you know that you had a voice that was? You were like, oh my god. I don't know. I always liked the way it felt to sing. So for me, the attraction to it was always like physical. I just liked the way the vibration felt, you know, and I liked the sound of my voice for myself. And I remember though in sixth grade, we were singing in like a choir, you know, and the girl who's sitting next to me looked over. She said, you have such a nice voice. And I was like, oh, thank you. But I didn't want anyone to hear me, you know. So oh, wow. I didn't want anybody to hear me. So I don't know what I took over my body when I was 12 to ask my mom if I could take voice lessons because I was so shy. But I think I just knew I, I really liked singing and I wanted to do more of it. So, yeah. And it shows. It's amazing because you have such a, a richness to your voice. You know, you have one of those luscious voices. You know, <laughs> I hear in tones in your voice, I hear so many people and mm. so many experiences and then breaks out Cecily you know and you hear that you know people always say oh you sound like this you sound like this yeah and then out comes your own voice through it all you know what are some some of the artists that inspire you there's so many I think the big ones for me are Anita Baker I love Anita Baker I love love Anita Baker um the first time I ever saw her perform I think I cried the whole entire show wow. <laughs> I was just overwhelmed and uh, I love Minnie Riperson. That's my favorite singer in the world. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm, yeah, I've announced to her that it's my favorite singer in the world. <laughs> favorite singer. I love, I love Minnie Riperson. Um, I love Shaka Khan. Oh, I love, goddess. Yes, I love Faith Evans. Oh, I love her I listen as well. to Faith Evans all day long and study her all day long. I think those are like my top my top ones right there. Wow, wow, I'm, that's amazing. And then there's just the classics like Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, you know, it's like people you study. <laughs> you have to, you, you have, have to. to. I think as an artist, they always tell you to certain yeah. to study their songbooks, study these artists, you know, mm -hmm. and it's so important that, uh, you know, through this journey and, and going through, you know, you see yourself as a, uh, you know, this amazing songbird, this woman of uh, many talents who, you know, how do you, how do you get in a zone or, or begin to write? How do you focus as a writer, as an artist who happens to write? How do you get in that zone? I think for me, a big part of the process is privacy. So to begin with, because it's such a vulnerable thing to write, you know? So I feel like I really need some time to myself where I feel like nobody can hear me because then I can just do whatever and not feel judged by it. Okay. So for me, it's like to get into that vulnerable state, I really need to be somewhere like quiet and by myself for at least some time wow. to start off with so that I can get the idea out so I can play around and 
um, feel like it's just me. Because when you're a singer, it's like every time you open your mouth and someone hears you, you feel like it's a performance. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're like singing. You're at a grocery store, and yeah. there's somebody to hear you <laughs> mumbling or singing with a song. It's like, yeah. and you don't always want to be on. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. You know? and yeah. I feel like many times as artists, people want you to always be on. And there are moments when you don't want to be Cecily. You want to be <laughs> your mom's child or your dad's child, or you mm -hmm. want to be your 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 your, your husband's wife. Right. You know, there are yeah. moments where you just want to have to yourself. Yeah. How do you find those moments to yourself? How do you create safe spaces for Cecily? Mm. Oh, that's such a good question. I think for me, I like um, I like cooking for my family. So I, I love Sundays. So I love on Sundays when I can just cook for my family and we can like all eat together and stuff. I love that so much. Um, and I love just like you said, not having to be on, like uh, not having to look pretty, like. <laughs> you gotta have those you know, mamas since it's not having to put on, days. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, not having to put on makeup or make sure my fro is not dented on one side, or you know, and just like be in the house with my husband and just relax. I I love that. Um, yeah, those are those are some places and times where I feel like real safe and secure. That's yeah. amazing. I think that's wonderful. You talked about your fro. <laughs> and as an artist, you know, I feel like so many times they pigeonhole people into looking mm. a certain way and mm. saying, oh, you should straighten your hair mm. or you, you know, do this and do that. And they don't. I, I love your whole look. You bring yeah. all of this kind of everything to, you know, earth mm. child, mother child, <laughs> goddess, all of those things you bring to Thank the stage. You. And, you know, songstress, mm. jazz artists, you know, pop, all of that you encompass all those things without having to have a uh, 26 inch hair down your back <laughs> and your boobs up, you right, know, right, you right. know, and you don't have to do that as an artist, you know, do you sometimes feel the pressure? Um, I think for me, I just like, it's funny cause people always say when I'm on stage, I like turn on, like I become different where I feel like when I'm on stage, I'm like more myself, you know what I mean? Wow. I just feel more myself. So when I'm on stage, I like to, look like myself i like to wear things that make me feel like myself you know so and i mean straight hair just isn't me like i do straighten my hair a couple times a year just for something different and after three days i'm like tired of it i'm like this is boring <laughs> and you got to get back to you you yeah, got to find you yeah. and being and, and getting to that space where you're vulnerable right 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 exactly i feel like some for some artists it's important before you go on to kind of put on your mask almost like i need to put on all this makeup i need to put on my wig i need to put on this dress you know because that's like part of the show and for them being like too vulnerable on stage is like too much they need a separation of like this is me on stage and this is me off stage where for me it's like i don't know it just all feels like me all the time. <laughs> so, and that's, that, that's yeah. your, your ability to connect with your audience. People feel mm -hmm. you're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, when, and when every time I watch you and I hear you and I sing you, the first time I saw you, you walked onto this big stage, this small woman, and you walked to the stage and you commanded it. And you just, out comes this voice. And you took us on a journey through your song. And I listened to it. I said, who is she? I wanted to know more about you. And every time I saw you, I started Googling you and start going places. And I was like, wow, she is amazing. Thank and it's you. just so wonderful that to, to connect with you on so many levels, you know, to sit and have this conversation. Yeah, you know, I so like nice. this. You know, this is, look, this is a conversation and we're going to claim it. But we're become the intimate conversation before the Grammys. You know, <laughs> you know before the nod, for all of that coming, because it's coming, because we're speaking it into existence. And, um, you know, it's just so amazing to see you as an artist and to, you know, to know that you just are not one thing. You're a multifaceted mm. woman, yeah. child, wife, all of these things make Cecily who mm -hmm. she is. Yeah. You know, and yeah. if, if when audience see you, what would you like them to be their takeaway? What would you like people to feel as they come into the room with you? Yes. I've been asked this question a few times and I always say, I want people to feel vulnerable and not in like a scary way. Right. You know, I want people to feel 
the freedom to, to go to that emotional place that they don't feel safe to go to other times. Wow. You know what I mean? And I think that's important. I think that's yeah, so important as an yeah, artist, yeah. being vulnerable, being free, working in spaces that are sometimes uncomfortable. Because here we are in a building doing an interview, and they have scaffolding outside, they're working, they're cleaning, <laughs> and they're doing all this stuff. And we are being vulnerable in the space with all of this going on. So yeah. people who are listening, if you hear all the sound effects, that's stuff going on. Artists working and people working. And us having a, this conversation in the midst of everything it's like finding quiet in a world full of thunder <laughs> you know and you know and i just feel like you know it's so amazing to see and feel that when you connect with artists and watch them just take flight you mm -hmm. know and that's what i see you take us on a journey every time i see your artistry you know you take us on this amazing journey what are some of the goals that you want what are some of the things that you see oh, for yourself wow i mean it changes all the time <laughs> <laughs> but I think right now my main focus is next year. I really want to do some touring in Europe and Japan. That's, I would feel amazing if I could make that happen. I, and I shouldn't say if, I'm going to feel amazing when that happens. It will. Yeah. We're yeah. speaking it into existence. Yeah. I feel like sometimes you have to go abroad to fully be appreciated. Sometimes. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, I remember being um, in London, walking mm -hmm. down the street. And we were visiting, and I looked up, and it said Chuck Brown, the Godfather of Go Go. We walked into, we bought tickets. We told them we were from Washington, yeah. and they were like, "Are you serious?" They start <laughs> laughing. And we walked into the arena, and it was ten black little faces. We looked around; the entire room was full of folks that did not look like us. So of course, he recognized us yeah. from the stage, and he acknowledged us. He says, oh my God, I got some people that look like me in the audience, and where y'all from? And we said, DC, see, I can't get rid of y'all. <laughs> so you know, it was so <laughs> funny. It was that That's kind so of funny. like, and they were like, oh my God, he was, to see that of artists that you know from where you are, to mm -hmm. see the love that they get, and other places, the appreciation mm -hmm. of artists, their, their artistry, and to really be celebrated in the way that they should. Because I feel like too many times, we as artists, you folks want to put you in a box. And they mm -hmm. want to say, you just sing this kind of music. You just sing that kind of music. Yeah. and only be on this radio. But you're mm -hmm. out of the box. All the, I mean, people who come to see you, your, 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 your ability to connect and your your song list and what you you take I mean I mean you're just like you get a little bit of Joan Baez a little Johnny <laughs> Mitchell a little Shaka Khan a little Nancy Wilson you take them on and then your own stuff can't be categorized because mm. as a storyteller mm. your ability to connect with the audience as you write and sing is like don't put me in a box don't check me in just listen to my story yeah that's definitely true. That's definitely true. I always have difficulties trying to, you know, find my like target audience because literally I know people who are 18 who love my music and people who are 86 and love my music and they'll both come to the same show. <laughs> Isn't, that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful that you're connecting with all yeah, ages? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's that very you're true. crossing um, color lines. Yeah, yeah. You know, that and everything so that's that speaks to the value of who you are as a woman as a as an artist and mm -hmm. you know and you know you talk about future goals if if i if how would you describe yourself in maybe three or four maybe even five words how do you describe cecily oh goodness i don't even know i think how i want to be described or who i am in five words i am a, mm, it's so hard to put words on yourself, you know what I mean? I guess I would say, does that have to be a sentence? Or it doesn't have to be, be five words. Oh. You know, it doesn't really have to be a sentence. <laughs> just like five words. Words. Like if I was to say who I am, I would say free, mm -hmm. beautiful, mm -hmm. and spiritual. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yes, I would say loving vulnerable open to growth um peaceful mm -hmm. and uh 
grounded. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Being grounded, being grounded mm -hmm. and being vulnerable in your in your music, in your journey mm -hmm. and all of those amazing things. You know, that, what are some of the other you talked about wanting to tour more, wanting to see the world more. Um, what would like, you know, it, first of all, how can people follow you? Let's talk about yes. that. Let's talk about all your social media. So people who are watching this at home or watching it on YouTube, how can they follow you? You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Cecily Alexa, which is spelled C-E-C-I-L-Y-A-L-E-X-A. -E -E and you can find more info about me and all my upcoming show dates on my website, which is www.cecilymusic.com C-E-C-I-L-Y-M-U-S-I-C.com Bam! Get you some. I mean, you know, all that's as important. <laughs> Get you some more. You know, I took that term. I love bam. I took that from a good friend of mine. You know, I take a little bit of from everybody. <laughs> and I always give them credit. I took yeah. that from Yarday Noir, you know, and people stole from me, I steal from them, you know, and, but I give them credit. It is <laughs> important that you you give other artists their credit and that, you know, and, um, you know, you talk about, where are you from? I'm from D.C. Born and raised, a born, native Washingtonian. Born and raised in D.C. and also in Annapolis. I lived in Annapolis for a long time. I usually don't claim it, but... <laughs> DMV, DMV, the DMV, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. all part of that experience of making you who you are. Yeah, but I'm a third generation Washingtonian. That's wonderful. I'm born and raised here as well. You know, my parents, their parents, their, my children, their children, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, born and raised, I'm a die in D.C. I love D.C. It's a wonderful place to be, but I love the world. And you talking about traveling, it's so important as we travel and take other experiences and other cultures with us on our journey. And speaking mm -hmm. about our journey, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. The, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for seeing this amazing woman and experiencing all that we go through as artists and taking this journey with you us and we appreciate you and once again thank you for watching thank you thank you